Let me get my headphones on. Starting a little bit late today. Woke up late. So, last time... We... Helped, uh... An elf dude... Steal some biological samples or something. I don't know. We have to call it payment for it, though. I think. Claim payment. 1,000. Great. Yeah, Tygath, right. That's the dude. Okay, we had some pay data still out there. Don't have anything new to post. We just have, uh, I think two jobs to do. Yeah, so we can help Guy Chu or help uh, Isabel right now. I'm leaning to Isabel right now. And yeah. Oh, okay, this was weird, uh, Matrix stuff, of course. I don't think there's a whole lot that my, my main character's gonna be able to do there. Let's do it. Oh, we have to give, uh, Ragnar a quick, quick hello. Wait, do we have more to talk about with him? No, we don't. We already we already went through these options. I don't know. I don't feel like reading a huge block of text right now. is the most interesting person on the boat, I do have to agree. Okay, let's talk to Gobbit real quick. Just because we did a job and we haven't had a side quest for Gobbit yet. So after every job, I'm going to go harass her. See if we can get a side quest. What? She's gone the plague. I don't know where she ran off to, but she looked upset. She just said something about friends in trouble, then left. By the time I could disconnect from the octopus, she was on her way out of town. I like the sound of that. Did she tell you what went down out there all those years ago? Yeah, she told me all about it. Um. Yeah, the mutiny. Let's go with that. We'd better go and get her then, hadn't we? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, uh, so this takes priority, actually. Let's go find Gobbit. And then we'll do Isabelle's job. Then we'll do Gachu's job. And who knows, maybe we'll even have a job for Duncan. Although maybe his job just is the main quest. But... I guess Raymond is all we really care about. What about you, lady? You find out anything more about these dreams? Hmm. 
I was getting hounded by some of my regular patrons and maybe a sanitation officer too. Hmm, that doesn't matter, the plague. I found it. The thing we've been searching for. I know what's happening in the walled city. I'm all ears. The Yama Kings, they're real. Mona. I'm serious. You know me, I'm the last person to start believing in Santa Claus. Much less my mother's ravens. But this is solid. The Yama Kings are real, and they're coming. They've been on their way to the walled city since the place was built. The dreams, they're portents of their coming. Omens manifested as dreams. Still. Just think about it. The strange things we've been dreaming. The sensations. The hunger. Asleep or awake, it affects us all the time, anywhere. The connection? We're all in or near the walled city, itself a beacon for disaster. Something, or some things, have noticed the city, and now we're noticing them. It's been the Yama Kings all along. Not quite. I don't think the Yama Kings are the cause of the walled city's corruption. They're the effect. Something in the walled city has so polluted the feng shui of the place that it's acting as a magnet for malevolent astral beings. Mom was right. There's something at work in the walled city. I don't know if it's a curse or something else, but there's something deeply unnatural at work in that place. So sorry, Mother. I thought I was closing my eyes to your madness, but all I did was prevent myself from seeing the truth, from seeing what was unfolding right in front of me. Uh, so can the Yama Kings leave the city? Well, why would they? The curse, or whatever it is that's attracting the Yama Kings to the walled city, has turned the city into an ideal hunting ground. Have you ever heard of terraforming? It's an old science fiction idea. You make a planet, like the moon or something, into an Earth-like environment to support human habitation. That's what's happening in the walled city, only in reverse and on the astral level. I think that pent-up, toxic key in the walled city is turning the place into an extension of the Yama King's home plane, making the environment there hospitable for them. They won't range beyond it for the same reason why you wouldn't leave a bathysphere in the ocean deeps. But as we've seen, that corruption is spreading. It's already starting to seep into Hyoi. If left unchecked for another 30, 40 years, who knows what might happen. So these beings made your mother insane. The Yama Kings weren't directly responsible for Mom's corruption. It was caused by the root problem, that which attracted the Yama Kings to the city in the first place. The poison at the bottom of the well. Whatever it was, it's been there from the very beginning, and it's in no way natural. People did this. Well, at least now you know what happened to her. I know where you're coming from, the plague. But my mother still allowed herself to be corrupted. She put herself in the way of evil, and I... and it took her. Not a second thought for anyone else. Her research has given us valuable resources. I'm glad these journals, these pieces of her mind, can be used to arm ourselves against the Yama Kings. The knowledge it's given us will help in the trials to come. Yeah, this is big, crafty. Please, the plague. You have to stop it. This evil. For yourself. For my mother. Every man, woman, and child in the walled city and Hioi. Nobody outside of our community will take care of it. They've already written people like us off. If what's happening here is to be undone, we have to be the ones to undo it. Heck yeah. Let's see what I can do. Uh, so where where do we need to go? For got it. Catch a boat. Boop. 
right here. Whoa, hold up. How much money do I have? That's enough money for a drone. Hey, beautiful. Good to see you. Let me see those drones, baby. Uh, well, we can get the wolf found. <coughs> Expansive. <coughs> Let's do it. Who doesn't love a good wolf out? I'll sell the sundowner. No, we could actually sell these weapons that we won't ever be able to use. Yeah, we probably should. <clears throat> wow, especially since these are both lowered accuracy things. Wow, we almost have enough money to get um the other drone too. I wonder if we sell. Steel links. We got how much for it? Yeah, let's sell the steel links. Goodbye, steel links. You served me well. But now I will have a Guardian Mark II. Beautiful. Goodbye, Matthew. I won't ever need your services again. Come to admire the river with Jomo. I have a bottle of Baiju we can share. Uh, not now, I need a favor. What favor can Jomo do for you? You need a body dumped at sea? I can do it fast. No one will see. If you need to hire some cargo on a beach, make a map with X marks the spot. <laughs> I need to take me to the sinking ship. Ah, easy. I know exactly where that heap of junk is. Uh, vocal. We can only take Isabel. Why can't we take Dunk? Lame. Hong Bay. Captain Jomo's converted speedboat chops through the rough water like a cleaver through chicken bones, launching you skyward with every wave it hits. Your destination? The sinking ship, Gobbit's former home. The orc pirate laughs and opens the throttle. Wind and rain lash your face as the floating amalgamation of shipping containers grows larger. You can see that it's stacked at least three containers deep. An inelegant brick of corrugated weathering steel. An assortment of pontoons, buoys, and other flotation devices have been lashed to the base of the raft to prevent it from tipping. You don't know what's happening here, or why Gobbit felt the need to go face it alone. But one way or another, you're about to find out. Ooh. Uh, you, you need to take more medicine. Take this. 
Asher and Hapless. Karma? It's only like three karma, isn't it? Oh no, it's not. Sure, slightly better drones. The scramble up the side of the sinking ship was treacherous. You hauled yourself up over the edge with your heart hammering in your chest, clawing for purchase against the wind and the driving rain. Walking on the surface deck isn't much better. The steel that you're standing on is slick, sheeted with water from the rainstorm that hammers down from above. Every time you shift your weight, you can feel your feet begin to slide. There are no safety rails in sight. A slip, a rogue wave, it wouldn't take much to send you screaming over the edge of the raft and into the dark waters below. <sighs> this thing's a wreck. I can't believe Gaba ever chose to live here. Yeah, what'd you expect? You've seen her cabin on the big Texas. <sighs> Fair point. This is still worse, though. At least her cabin isn't falling apart. Truth is, what we're seeing here doesn't even fit. The lady in charge of this thing, um, Melinda, or whatever her name was, was supposed to be some sort of control freak. And Gobbit always talked her pal Cadmus up as a top quality repair guy. Does this thing look like it's in good repair to you? Nope, but we don't know. A sudden gust of wind buffets you, sending you sliding. Isabel drops to a crouch, clinging to the metal with gloved hands to keep herself from slipping. <sighs> we should get moving. It's dangerous up here, and my gear's getting soaked. Yeah, that's fine. Gobbit, make sure she's alright. Take the lead. I'll follow. Rats. Devil rats, don't let them bite you. They bit me. <laughs> Damn it. I didn't even have a chance to not let them bite me. Okay, at least these NPCs are on our side. Um, is this Melvina and Cadmus or something? Guardian, defeat my rat enemies. Wolf out. Defeat my other rat enemies. Two rat enemies remain. Killed it with that hit. Let's punch it. Punch the rat. We missed. Locked. Nice. Oh, and the rat blocked me. Yep, we got the bastards. Hello, local inhabitants. Come join us by the fire and get warm. The woman looks by the, f the the woman by the fire looks like she hasn't seen a bar of soap in weeks. Her companion doesn't look much better. Their faces are streaked with soot and grime. The rain seems impotent to wash away. I'm glad to see you made it through that one in one piece. Please come stand by the fire and get warm. Who are you? My name's Kara, Kara Lung. That's Patrick Lowe. Hey, welcome aboard. The sinking ship is our home. When we heard sounds of trouble, we came running. Uh, what's up with the killer rats? The devil rats, you mean. 
They're becoming something of a crisis for us. We don't know why they've started attacking and we can't seem to wipe them out. Truth be told, we could really use your help. I have some questions. Sure. Ask away. Uh, when did the devil rats start appearing? A couple of months ago, I think. The days kind of flow together out here. It's hard to say. They only start getting aggressive a couple of weeks ago, though. How many people live here? Beats me. Population's been going down recently, though. I'll tell you that much. A lot of the ships barricaded, off-limits. We have no idea how many people are living in those sections now. When I first arrived on Sinking Ship, there were at least a couple hundred souls aboard. Attrition being what it is, I'd guess there may be 70 of us left. Like you said, it's hard to say. Uh, you to the welcoming committee. Yes, Malvina told us. We are told to keep position up here and watch out for incoming vessels. Piracy is always a threat in these waters. I can't tell you how happy we are to see a couple of friendly faces on deck. <laughs> how do you know that we're friendly? We're heavily armed strangers and you only just met us. If you'd wanted to kill us, to kill us, you'd have done it already, right? Besides, we know you aren't pirates. You haven't tried to rob us yet. Uh, okay. That's cool, guys. Yeah, we'll help you with the rats, but you need to help us first. Uh, refresh my memory. Didn't we help you, uh, just a moment ago? Steal a swarm of double rats off? We didn't ask you to do that. We could have handled the rats on our own. We're looking for a friend. All right, describe this friend of yours to me. She's young, about my age, orcish, with a shaved scalp and dreadlocks. Have you seen her? Well, I'm afraid not. I wish that we had, but we don't get to see many strangers here. So how about it? Will you help us with our rat infestation or not? Yeah, we'll help. The rats have been a huge problem for us, between the damage they inflict and the disease they carry. They've made it impossible for us to keep our regular maintenance duties on the raft. If you follow us, we'll lead you down below depths. With your help, we'll get the ship cleaned out again. Sure. Let's clean up rats. <laughs> Is Gobbit going to be mad at us for killing devil rats? Does she like devil rats? They are rats still. I guess there were lots of rat shamans here, but... Dick. Stash. Dick. Stash. Oh. A shallow pool of standing water has gathered on the platform, separating it from an access hatch at the edge of the raft. Electricity arcs over the surface of the pool in angry spiderwebs of blue-white light. Whoa, hold up. The damned anti-boarding system's gone haywire again. Look, it isn't draining the way it's supposed to. Again? We just fixed that pump last week. Anti-boarding system? What the hell is this? Bad idea, that's what. Blame the Shadowrunners that lived on this thing before we did. It's like an anti-theft system on a car, only a lot meaner. When it gets tripped, the channel floods and the ship's power gets shunted into the water. It can deliver a hell of a shock. Only now it seems to trigger randomly, and the pump that we installed on it as a workaround has started breaking down at the drop of a hat. <clears throat> Great. Well, it isn't that dangerous, all things considered. You've got boots on, right? You could probably make it across without... 
It's pouring out. We're both drenched, and that thing has to be putting out a lot of voltage for those arcs to be visible. Trying to cross that pool as is would be a bad idea. A really bad idea. Uh, okay. I'll try and find another solution. Maybe there are other locals up here that can help. It couldn't hurt to take a look. Yeah, okay. Let's not just walk across it. Wait, wait, wait. Is there a thing I can touch? Before use, it's a very worn and very non-functional water pump. An ancient hose snakes down from the pump into a drainage channel along the deck. Looks pretty busted. Maybe we could fix it with some of the junk that's littering the deck. Upon closer inspection, you can see that this pump suffers from clear signs of neglect. Years of constant, of near constant use and deferred maintenance have taken their toll on the machine, and it's recently broken down. Heavy scoring and burn patterns also indicate the reason why the pump isn't working. A blown fuse. Okay, I might be able to just fix this. You pop the rusted metal hatch on the pump's casing and examine the machine's internal workings. If you wanted to, you could bypass the burnt out fuse and draw from the system's reserve power directly. Doing so would give you one or two more charges, but it could also damage the machine beyond repair. Ah, uh, no, let's find a good way to repair it. Hello, squatters. One of the locals looks up at the sound of your approach. The others remain huddled around the low fire, their backs hunched against the pelting rain. You need something, girl? If not, shove off. This fire's taken. Uh... Water pumps, blown a fuse. Nowhere I can find a new one. Maybe? Could, could be a fuse anywhere up here. We tend to not throw things away like that. Check the piles. That's where the bits and bobs usually wind up. I'd watch my hands if I were you. Rats have been known to hide in those piles. He's right. You might get chewed on if you're not careful. I'm looking for a friend. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think they've seen it. Uh... Uh, what about Malvina? Yeah, but if you want to talk to her, you're gonna have to go down below. The boss lady stays down there, by the water line. I'd stay away if I were you, though. Why? Just do yourself a favor and do as he says, girl. In fact, do us all a favor and get back on that trash heap you floated in on. I promise you'll be happier for it if you do. What's happening here? It's raining. <laughs> Strange things have always been happening here ever since the beginning. But yeah, things have been odder than usual lately. And those damned rats are a big part of it. With all the people who've been getting sick, I've considered packing up and moving away. But I've got no way, no place else to go. Been here for about five years now. And everyone I care about lives on this raft. So here I stay. Cool. Uh, so piles. And there are rats in them. So let's risk the rats. Nothing here. Nothing here but a rat! Two beady eyes lock on to me. Beady, like a rat. This gonna happen to every single one of these? No? Okay. Cool, got the fuse. Replace it. You eject the pump's blown fuse. It clatters to the deck below. With a deft motion, you click the intact fuse that you discovered into place. Lights on the pump's control panel go from red to green, and the little machine rattles back to life. Cool, let's hurry across. 
Oh, look, rats. Who could have possibly predicted that? These rats are the devil. Um, well, I'm kind of surrounded. Going down. Upon descending the ladder, you find yourself in the cramped confines of a shipping container. Interior walls have been erected of corrugated aluminium, and the doors have been cut to allow passage from the compartment uh, from compartment to compartment. The air down here is ripe with the odor of rotting garbage. Sorry about the state of the place. The rats have kept our work crews too busy to worry about hauling the garbage. But now that you're here, we'll be able to set things right. Kill off those little bastards once and for all. Hey, can you take me to Malvina or Cadmus? Or Gobbit. We don't know anyone named Gobbit. Cadmus is sick. He's in the quarantine wing. He probably doesn't have long. Malvina's below us, on the lower deck. She's a busy woman, though. She's the only one who's keeping this place afloat. Uh, take us to Cadmus. Follow us. We'll take you right to him. Doors. A local inhabitant. Okay. Hello, local inhabitant. Oh, I knew folks. I'll be damned. The hell are you doing here? Looking for a friend. I uh, know nope, I ain't seen your friend. Sorry about that. You don't even know what our friend looks like yet. How can you say for sure you haven't seen her? No one's come down here today but you. Not a soul. Didn't see anyone yesterday either. And I can't remember much past then. Bad memory, you see. Can't do a thing about it. What's behind that door? Mm hmm, that door is storage closet. Nothing worthwhile in there. Don't even know why they have me stand and watch over it. Well, them's the rules, right? Can't question the rules. Yeah, let's just take a peek. I guess that it couldn't. I mean, you can't steal nothing, can you? Sure. Heck yeah. Let me guess, it's full of rats. Who are you? Strangers, you picked a bad time to come visit. We're looking for a friend. Then you're out of luck. I haven't seen anyone from outside of quarantine in weeks. You want to talk to someone, talk to the dwarf. I'm busy. I need to keep my eyes open for more of those little bastards. We can't let any more of them sneak in here. Not after what happened to Simon. Best of luck. Hey, dwarf. A stocky dwarf leans up against the wall of this container room. His skin is sallow and it hangs off his bulky frame like a half-deflated balloon. 
you saw plenty of sick people back in the barracks. Addicts, BTL heads, people whose immune systems have been ravaged by disease. This guy looks worse. Hello, stranger. Don't see many new faces on the rack these days. But you're here, so you want something. Now what would that be? We're friends of Gobbit's. Have you seen her around? Friend, if you're looking for Gobbit, you're about three years too late. Your friend ain't here. And you've stumbled in the worst kind of place to be lost. Are you Cadmus? Yes, that's me. You haven't seen Gobbit lately, have you? <laughs> no, I haven't seen the girl in years. I'd love to, mind you. She was a good friend way back when. What's wrong? Aside from the uninvited guests, you mean? We've got a rat problem. We've noticed. Don't let what's happened to me happen to you, too. You want my advice? You get out of here. You do it before you get bit. If you don't, you might just wind up on your deathbed here, right by my side. Sure. Yeah, you do that. If you should happen to find Gobbit, bring her by. I haven't seen her in a long time. It'd do me good to talk to her again before I die of this damn disease. Cool. Wait, wait, wait. There's a thing we can look at. Oh, it's that same thing. Just up this way. There's a store here. Yeah, we already beat you there, man. Well, how do you? More devil rats. Oh. Don't go in there. It's a trap. fight taking place. We screwed up going around the wrong way. I think we're supposed to be on this side of the door. Still full health. You don't need my help.
Wait, what? Did they shoot Gobbit? Wait, I'm so confused. Why are they fighting Gobbit? Sense. Yeah, both of them, they're hostile. Okay. Hopefully I don't have grenades. to explain what the hell's going on to me. I thought these guys were our friends. The bloodied local tosses his gun aside and raises a pair of trembling hands. His eyes have gone wide with terror. Uh, I'm sorry, we, we didn't want to do it. We didn't have a choice. She... It, it ordered us to. What? What it? What are you talking about? I... I don't know what it is. It talks with Malvina's voice, but it... It isn't her. If you want to live, you have to do what it says. Okay, I'll let him live. Hey, it is. Hey, Seattle. I don't remember inviting you on this run, but I guess I'm glad you could make it. You're welcome, by the way. We're here to help you! And now I've finished pulling your ass out of the fire, maybe you can do that. Did I mention that they were leading you into a trap? Because that's what they were doing. Yeah, you mentioned it. What kind of trap? The kind where you end up dead. Look, I don't know exactly what they were planning to do, but I've seen them lead people through those doors before. The people who I watched go in there never came back out again. Not a one. They'd just scream and scream, and when the doors opened up again, they'd be gone. Okay. So now we're all together. You want to tell us why you came back here all by yourself? We'd have gone with you, Gobbit. All you had to do was tell us. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I figured this one was on me. I didn't want to wait another minute. Besides, I had a plan. What kind of plan? A pretty simple one. All I want to do is get the lay of the land, sneak around a little. Maybe find my old friends and get some answers. I didn't come here to get into a firefight. And it's easier to be quiet solo than it would be dragging you two around. No offense. So you scoped the place out. Fun. Mission accomplished. Do you know what you're doing now? Yeah, this place is fucked. I'm gonna sink it. What? The, sh the sinking ship's doomed, Seattle. I could feel it the second I set foot on board. Earlier than that, even. On some level, I think I could feel it back home. That's why I couldn't stop thinking about this place. Whatever's happening here, it's wrong. This whole place feels off to me somehow. Maybe even toxic. I came back to find my friends, Cadmus and Malvina, to check on them. Instead, I found a swarm of man-eating rats, a death trap, and a bunch of squatters who seem intent on killing me. So I'm gonna kill them right back. And I'm gonna use the scuttling charges still embedded in the hole to do that. I've already handled the ones on this level. But I haven't gone down below yet. We need to activate the charges below the waterline if we're gonna bring this sucker down. 
So that's where you're heading next? Downward? Well, not quite, on account of the trap. I don't know how to get past it yet. Minor setback, right? So my next step was to figure that out. Yeah, Cadmus wants to see you. That's great. Of all people on this raft, Cad is the one I'd most trust to get past whatever's in that room. He was always more of a mechanic than he was a shaman. Okay. Um. Okay. Let's look around. Get the lay of the land. Bring Gobbit to meet Cadmus. The dwarf's milky eyes track you as you approach. A wave of recognition washes over his face, but his movements remain lethargic. Eventually, he manages to slur out a few words. Gobbit, back after all this time! Yeah, I'm sorry it's taking this long. It's good to see you again, Cad. It's good to see you too, kid. I see you found your friends! Yeah, found them. You don't look very good, Cadman. Well, I'm breathing, kinda. That's more than I can say for some. Cadmus, I... Save it. I'm not mad. I'm mostly just happy to hear your voice again. It's good to have a friend. Um, there's a trap room. Nothing about it. Yeah, me and my crew built the dang thing. Let me guess on Malvina's orders. The first thing she asked us, she asked us to do after Sui's little rebellion. We started work on the thing the week after you left. Yasmin was in charge of the project. Can you tell us how to get past it? But no, no, but Yaz can. She should be somewhere on this level. Go find her and tell her I sent you. We will. Thanks, Cad. Don't mention it! Hang in there, man. Let's look at the dang barricaded wall again. I guess Gobbit has something to say about it. Oh. Let's talk to these people that we skipped talking to earlier. Who are you? Oh, freshly laundered man. Well, what have we here? Strangers on our humble raft, exploring her leaking bowels? Welcome to the sinking ship, strangers. Now tell me what you want. What do you do? A bit of this, a bit of that. I'm an artist. Rather, I used to be. An artist, and a socialite, and a man about town. By town, I mean raft, of course. Now I mostly find myself shut away here, on the sinking ship's upper deck. I've been festering away here for months, desperately clinging to the finer things in life. Quite the tale of woe, really. That's it, you just loiter? A fine and noble profession. But you're a street-level operative now. Blue-collar work. I wouldn't expect you to understand. Now, if that will be quite all... Who are you? You may address me as Mercurio, at your service. Interesting. Uh, there was this person. The squatter's need of immediate medical attention. Her torso's a gory mess, and an ever-expanding pool at her feet tells you that she's on her way to bleeding out. Please help me. Why can't we have Gobbit heal it? Yeah, go oh, we can. Gobbit, take care of this. Already on. The power of Gobbit's magic washes over her, erasing the hole in her abdomen. Gradually, gradually his eyes focus, and the color returns to her face. Um, sure, his eyes on her face. A 
I don't know who you are, strangers. You just saved my life. If I can ever return the favor, you let me know. What happened? Or what's your name? Maria Liam. My friends call me Sparrow. It's good to meet you, Sparrow. Better luck for me that I met you. If I hadn't, I think I'd have bled out by now. How'd you get shot? That was part of the last mutiny attempt. Made it through that all right. I guess I also made some enemies. I don't know who shot me, but it's a fair bet that someone on this boat is holding a grudge. Okay. Aha! Loot. Oh, no, a terminal. Freeware mail client. Okay, let's read uh, through each message. We need to talk about these new regulations that you keep handing down. Look, I used to be a merchant marine. I get it. I know how important procedure is on a boat. I know the mindset you're working against. But some of these new regs are bordering on draconian, and they're getting in the way of our maintenance crews downstairs. Order's a good thing. Micromanaging isn't, so let's talk about it, okay? got a hell of an infestation going on in the lower levels, and we need to start doing something about it. Can I count on you and your boys to help me with this? I know that M would frown on what I'm proposing, but she isn't doing anything to help. We have to take matters into our own hands before things get ugly. So I'm guessing this person is Anson Chung Sun. This was exactly what I was afraid of, see? Those bloody rats have eaten us out of house and home. And now that their food supply is gone, they've decided to turn on us. It's pretty clear that M can't or won't use her magic to fix this. So it's on us to deal with the fallout. I've had the upstairs maintenance crew set aside a couple of containers as a quarantine area slash sick room. It's inevitable we're going to start seeing people getting sick. And we need a place to shelf them. If we don't do this, we're going to have a panic on our hands. Vitus, Vitus deaths aren't pretty. Huh. Yes, tell your brother I got his note, and that I'll be there. I don't know what all this is about, but I have a guess. If I'm right, well, I'm in. Things have to change around here, for all our sakes. Okay, so they're mutineers now. A slender human woman in shabby overalls looks up from her work with a frown. You can't help but notice the scars on her neck. She's been bitten by a vampire. I'll be damned, Gobbit. Hello, Yasmin. It's good to see you again. Yeah, you too. Where the hell have you been all these years? <laughs> on a different boat, funny enough. Yes, I'm a little out of the loop on what's happening here. Can you do me a solid and fill us in? Yeah, we're not supposed to talk about it, but I'll tell you what I know. Wow, that is quite the scar on her neck. What's happening? Well, we're all struggling to deal with the devil rat infestation. You probably know about them. With all the rats around, there aren't many volunteers for the maintenance crews anymore. It gets lonely out here. Well, that's it. That's all I have to say. Come on, Yaz, you're talking to me here. So tell me what's going on. I can't help you if I don't know what's happening. Yasmin's eyes dart up and down the hall, scanning for anyone who might be coming. Her, eyes be her hands begin to shake. After a moment, she leans toward Gobbit and lowers her voice to a whisper. Yeah, alright. The raft is cursed. I think I know what you're talking about, Yaz. I could feel it all the way back home. But tell me more. I want to hear it from you. Malvina isn't in charge here anymore. She's gone now. I think she may be dead. And whatever it is that's taken her place, it's horrible. I don't even know what it is, but it isn't human. And the worst part is, it talks over the intercom using her voice. Thanks, yes, that helps. Believe it or not, it helps. 
you have any close encounters with the double rats? Ugh, yeah, don't go downstairs unless you absolutely have to. The lower decks are absolutely crawling with these things. But Cadmus said you built that trap. Yeah, that was me. I didn't want to build the thing, but I did it to help Malvina, to keep us safe. I've regretted it ever since. Well, we could really use your help, Yaz. We need to get below decks, and we need to do it in one piece. Can you help us get past the traps you built? I, I think so. It's been a long time, but I think I remember what wires you'd need to snip to disarm the thing. There's a hidden access panel on the floor. You'd never find it if you didn't know where to look. You snip these wires here, and this one here, bypass this circuit, and then flip this lever. Do that, and you're done. The trapdoor won't trigger, and you won't get dumped into the killing pit. Killing pit. That's pretty much what you'd expect. Thanks, Yaz. You don't know how badly we needed this. I can guess. Cadmus sent you to me after all. Best of luck. Okay. There's more we can explore though. Claw scratches. What about you? Who are you? Another squatter, this one more beaten up than most. Bloody bandages wrap his knuckles, and one of his orbital sockets has been crushed, deforming the silhouette of his face. He peers at you with a mixture of suspicion and hostility. I don't recognize you. That means you're new here. You picked a bad place to go sightseeing, outsider. Uh, you okay, man? No, I'm not okay. I'm all beaten up and going blind in one eye. Now tell me what you want so I can be on my way. What's your name? My name? My name's e Ivan. Ivan Fu. That all? What's happening? It's going to shit. Rats everywhere. People dying. Smells like a garbage scow. That cure satisfy your curiosity, outsider. Anything else? Look, I ain't the damn welcoming committee. I'm just a bloody old man who wants to get back to the squad. If you want to know more about this boat, ask someone else. Sure thing. Sure thing, bub. Look at this maintenance thing. All lower decks are off limits until further notice. Maintenance. Trap mechanism. The air is thicker in here. Accurate. The scent clings to your tongue. It sticks in the back of your throat. It smells like damp cardboard and stale urine. Gobbit surveys the room warily, her nose crinkling in disgust. She produces the napkin with Cadmus's instructions. It's not Cadmus's instructions, it was Yasmin's instructions. Get it right. From her breast pocket. And hands them to you. There you go, Seattle. You know what to do. Let's hope that Yaz knows her stuff. Indeed. Following the grease pencil diagram, you locate a hunk of metal flooring with a slightly raised edge. Hooking your fingers under it, you lift to reveal a hidden access panel. Um, we just interacted with like, this big block of safe or whatever. That's not a floor panel. That's a good sign. Okay, let's disarm this thing. The instructions are surprisingly easy to follow. With three snips with your pocket knife and a rewired connection later, the floor spanning trapdoor has been disarmed. Well, that was easy. Go on, Seattle. You take the lead. You've earned it. Gee, thanks. <laughs> we safe. Room. Let's see. It's always prudent. Oh. Is this the killing room? This looks like it would be the room right under that other room. 
seems weird if we're just walking in there. Hello, rats? Stepping into this room is like wading into the killing floor of a slaughterhouse. There isn't an inch of ground that isn't caked with spilled blood. The stench that floods into your nostrils is as overpowering as it is vile. It's the stench of rotten beef and stale vomit, of warm blood poured into a chemical toilet and left out in the sun to cook. The buzzing of flies in your ears helps bring you back to your senses. Blinking against the light, you see stacks of moldering trash piled nearly to the ceiling. The piles of dead bodies are stacked nearly as high. Not depicted here. Uh, focus. None of these people died cleanly, not a one. In one way or another, each carcass has been ripped apart. Some have been riddled with bullets, others have been sliced open with blades or shredded by chisel-like teeth. The end result's always the same, another fresh corpse, its eyes frozen open in agony and surprise. Beach, no, and ha, ha, no, not Simon. Oh, rat, no, this. Sorry, Gobbit. A lot of them were friends. Some I didn't know. They all deserve better than this. Hi. Oh, okay, that's a scuttling charge. Okay. Okay. Is there a difference? Disabling the mechanical safeties on the bombs is just the first step. After we've done that, I'll need to reroute power from the raft to the bombs to arm them. I'll have to jack into whatever matrix server they have on this thing to do that. Okay, yeah, it is a good thing. I removed the safeties on the bombs upstairs. They're all ready to be armed. I'll leave the rest to you. Wait, was there a mutiny option? Uh... We could probably take it back. We'd have to find the shipboard alarm to let Cadmus and the others know what we're doing. It could be risky. But we could do it if you wanted to. Huh. Okay. Uh, the rats are going to attack me as soon as I come in here, right? No? Let's go talk to Cadmus again. Oh, we can't. Okay. I guess would you even want to still live here? And a lot of these people don't have anywhere else to go. So I think we can cleanse the den of evil. It's probably the best choice, right? They're still coming! Oh no, rats. Oh, actually, no, I need to do these ones. Hopefully some of these guys are close enough to take some... No, they aren't close enough to get air of the back. Damn it. Get punch in time. Aim burst. 
Well, better than nothing. Yeah, bite me. Damn it. Wow, Isabel's gun is actually pretty good. Well, that's still. It's better than the grenade launcher. Oh, another scuttle. Okay. Why? I don't understand these things. It's not letting me activate them. Shamanic cell to oh, Are we not on the bottom deck? Did something bug out? Why is this not a uh, marked up? This might be slightly bugged right now. I uh, can't go back up. Awesome. Uh, hmm. Well, I guess hopefully something will un unbug it as we just keep going. What is this? Just say it, we're scuttling you. Um, what if I don't want to scuttle it? Okay, I guess that's another thing to track, track with. Let's just do it. I don't care anymore. We've warned Cadmus. Well, because we have a little summoning thing. Yeah, damn it. Okay, let's try and reload. Load game. Damn, I wish we could save before we went down. <sighs> I feel like that's the first, like, real bug that I've ran into. Maybe I won't say anything about the mutiny. Yep. 
focus on the bodies. Sorry. Yeah, we know what we gotta do. Can we arm these now? No, we can't. not it working. Yeah, I'm gonna have to reload the whole dang mission. have a rap battle here this time either. Oh, okay. We are. They're still coming. That's weird. What exactly triggers that, I wonder? It seemed like fewer rats than last time as well. Just like run around maybe and hope that we triggered something? We still can't go up right. Hello, rats. That's why there were fewer rats. Okay, let me look this up. That was the name of this mission. The sinking ship.
also interact with this alarm lights. I think something key did not happen uh, before. We're going to have to reload the whole mission. That is so annoying. Not happy. Okay, so we're at least down here already and don't have to... Okay, that isn't too bad, actually. Uh, so let's not sequence break anything. Um, well, no, let's go talk to Cassius first. I'm just going to speed through this stuff that we already did. Hello, Cadmus. I'll be on the right side of this door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find you, more double rats. Sink it. All right. Sick. Deathly ill. Okay. What's that? Okay, Anson's dead, so. Okay, so we did have some new dialogue. We didn't, I guess, exhaust Cadmus' dialogue, and we should have. Interesting. 
me red egg. I know there's red. I didn't know it was red. A rat king. Yeah, she. I don't understand. Okay. This talisman the right king was holding was shiny object. How does it work? No, I tried sensing it once. The only thing that I took away from the experience was a migraine. Felt like there were railroad spikes buried behind my eyes for days. All I can tell you for certain is that it still works. As long as the Rat King's connected to that thing, you can't hurt it. Any holes you put in its body will close up on their own. Uh, so yeah, what can we do? If the bobble makes the thing unkillable, then you'll need to find a way to get that bobble away from it. Gobbit managed to do that during Sui's rebellion. I'll bet she could do it again. Can you try and fight it? Yes, from what? Yeah, I'd had enough. A lot of us had, so we took a page from old Sui's book. We mutinied. This is what's left of our side. Been locked in here for five days now, waiting for Vetus to finish the job. The rest of us got fed to the rats. Oh. No, it didn't. Truth is, we weren't prepared for how many of those bastard rats Malvira had bred, and we weren't expecting our shipmates to fight on her behalf. Why would the others stop you from taking the ship back? That doesn't even make sense. What do you think, girl? Fear. Fear of death. Fear of being gnawed apart by a hundred vermin. Fear of that thing. Okay, they're just afraid. Scared shitless is a better way of putting it, and I can't blame them. If anything, we're the crazy ones for trying to fight that thing. Yeah, maybe we can turn, turn them. Could do. They might rally around someone they know. Maybe someone who lived with and fought for him years ago. That was a subtle hint, girl. <sighs> Got a better idea. We can get you and your people onto lifeboats. And we're sending this raft to the bottom of the bay, and the Rat King is going with it. <laughs> you can't mean that. This is our home. We've got nowhere else to go, Gobbit. I am not going to let that thing force us to put this raft to the torch. You've already tried it your way. Look at what happened. Maybe it's good that you leave this place. I've lived in a place like this before. I've seen what it can do to people. She grew up in the walled city, Cad. Then she knows what we got to look forward to if you sink this raft. Because we sure as hell ain't going to afford living anywhere else. Got it. Listen, it isn't too late for the sinking ship. We can still turn this thing around. My failed mutiny failed because the Rat King knew things that we didn't. Yours can succeed if you try. My gut says we should sink the raft. I said that from the moment I've arrived here. That's what Rat wants me to do. So that's what I'm gonna do. Huh. Uh, yeah, mutiny sounds better. Your gut sucks, Gobbit. Spare the electric, Gobbit. Cadmus is right. You're going off half-cocked again. The truth is, we can save this raft if you want to. If you don't, tell us, and we'll sink it. Yeah, things have changed. 
Alright, Cad, if you're sure you can keep up your end, I'd be willing to help you with your mutiny. But if your people screw it up, I'm sinking this thing, got it? Awesome. So we have to convince people to help us. Two blasts of the alarm system. Okay. So now we have the additional objectives that we're supposed to have. Annoying. Yeah, when did all this start? Maybe a week or so. Oh. Well, how long ago? That was ages ago, right? Hang in there, man. I'll talk to you about the trap later. Um... Pick a strange time to visit. Yeah, we're looking for a friend. Talk to the dwarf. Yep. We did talk to the dwarf. Oh, yeah, and the time for me to come, you can count me in. So, one mutineer. What about you, forgetful lady? Uh, the Rat King has ruled here for long enough. We're taking it down, and we could use your help. Oh. How does it help for the Rat King to stay in control? What? You're kidding. Why are you running? Sorry, lady. Had to be done. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, let's help that uh, injured lady. Hey! Stop it. Patch her up. What's your name? Yep, Sparrow. How'd you get shot? Well, how about another mutiny? There's a med kit. Awesome. What about you, Yaz? Yeah, what's happening here? We already know this. What about Devil Rats? We're taking the ship back. Another mutiny? No, not me. Go to someone else. I saw what happened last time. Well, last time you didn't have me here. Sweet. A whole mutiny of uh, four people, right? Who are you? 
What are you doing, this rat? We're taking the sinking ship back. I can see you're a man who enjoys the finer things in life. You'll never have them as long as the Rat King's in control. You raise a valid point. Things have been going to hell recently. That's getting to the point where it's almost impossible to get my hands on a decent bottle of brandy. Even the Chilean stuff is hard to find. So you're going to fight for us or not? Yes, my dear, I think I will. After all, what's the purpose of a life without luxury? When you make your move, I'll do what I can to assist you. Okay, so we have a drunk, useless man. We've organized a mutiny, apparently. The most garbage mutiny ever. Now tell me about this trap. Oh, there's a trap room. Hang in there, baby. Mm. Oh yeah, we'll read through terminals, uh, even though that doesn't do anything. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Well, I guess there aren't her terminals, but... Yep. Trap, trap, trap. Tell us how. Thank you. Okay, mutiny is ready and raring to go. Let's say before we go down. Finally. We're ready to go down again. Hopefully things won't bug out. Stepping into this room is like wading into the killing floor of a slaughterhouse. Oh, uh, we already, yeah, we already did this. Focus on the bodies. Oh my god. Yeah, I want to do this. Get the shiny object away from the rat thing if you want to kill it. Probably gonna be tricky. I don't think she'll just let me saunter up and take it. Yeah, third time's a charm. Yeah, three makes a list. Alright, let's do it. Okay, maybe now can I actually arm these? Disabling the safety on this, of course. No. Oh. Yeah, I just think we should do both, right? Okay, are they telling me that I shouldn't bother doing... Okay. If we do change plans and decide to sink the raft, we'd better let Cat and his people know about it. They're expecting to mutiny, not abandoned ship. If we don't give them a heads up, they're headed on a one-way trip to the bottom of Hong Kong Bay. Got it. Yeah, we might as well disarm them, uh, as well. They're still coming! Oh, 
I wonder where the trigger for this is, because last time we did, uh, we went to the engine room first, but then we came back here, we explored both these rooms without them spotting. I'm a little bit confused. Okay, we got a three rat pile up. This door, that was Malvina's old room? That's it. I'm gonna go in there without starting, like, the big fight. The door's heavy. It could easily be barred to prevent outside intrusion, but instead, it stands ajar. It's almost as if it's inviting you in. That's Malvina's old cabin. The seat of power for the sinking ship. That's where the Rat King's gonna be. Once we go in there, we're gonna be in this. There's no changing our minds after we take the fight with that thing. What do you say, the plague? Are we doing this or not? Okay. Uh, well, we are doing it, but first we have to do the, the engine stuff, right? Two. Alarms for um Okay. Well twice. Okay, now we run. Uh, guys, come with me please. Go Rat King. Do it. Oh. Oh. The hell? That's disgusting. I thought they were just talking like a metaphorical Rat King, like because she's tying other spirits to herself. Uh, but no, she's also a literal Rat King. Interesting. The thing that looms over you is horrifying. A twisted amalgamation of woman and swarm, knotted and tied together into a single whole. Gobbit, you've returned to us, little mouse. You, the instigator of our own ascendancy. Ugh. The keystone, the source of our unity, the font of power that makes us strong. Okay, so there's redstone within altar. Where's the altar? Your gift to us, little mouse. You gave us what we needed to bring this raft to order. Save me the speech, Malvina, or whatever you are. I'm not here to talk. The new body isn't doing you any favors, by the way. You look like a furry tree stump. Our new body is beauty itself. Unity of biology and unity of purpose. Ugh. What happened, Malvina? We are not Malvina. We are one. Bound together for all time. 
We are order out of chaos, the death of entropy, a glorious unity. Oh, where to kill this thing? Okay. Whoa, it is fast. So there's an altar somewhere? If there is, I do not see it. Guardian, defeat this vile beast. Wolfhound, it's your turn. Oh, whoa, what the hell are those? There's the shiny object. Where? Where's the shiny, shiny object? <laughs> kind of pointless to the proximity mine there as a grenade, but... Oh, but that, okay. So does Dobbit have to be the one that goes and grabs it? An ominous chittering noise fills the air. That's no good. Get that shiny object. The Rat King shrieks as Gobbit lifts the shiny object in her hands. In its voice, you can hear the echoes of a thousand inhuman beings. This is interesting. I can feel Malvina's control over the rats. It's like a thousand strings connecting her to them. And it feels like... One of the Rat King's servitors shudders in place. Slowly, seemingly against its own will, it lifts its head to stare at you. I can tug at those strings. We will rend you all to pieces, tear your flesh to shreds. Buy me a little time, Seattle. I'm still getting used to this thing, but if you give me a minute or two, those demon rats will be mine. Okay. Um, I'm injured. Okay. How injured am I? Um, how do I... Okay. I need about 15 health. This is about... No. You don't have a weak mag kit. Oh, the battle started over, so I guess I need to re-put out my dudes. Here, heal me. Thank you, friend. Okay, we can take one action to go here. Magical shield, like an all encompassing shield. Like, will we be able to do any damage? We should probably just focus on the rats. I'm trying to move up a little bit so I can defend Gobbit. Why didn't the enemies take a turn? That was interesting. Need the 
which is bleeding, supposedly. So we just wait more for more rats to come. Oh. Okay, we have Gobbit back. The hostile spirit, no. Why do I have two different acidic pods? The Rat King's body shudders and convulses. As you watch, the living carpet of devil rats that forms the majority of its bulk begins to writhe. Malvina opens her mouth to speak, but you'll never know what she was going to say. The only sound that escapes from her throat is a long, ragged scream. Oh, with a dawning horror, you come to realize that what you're looking at. The devil rats that surrounded Malvina are turning inward. She is being eaten alive. Gobbit stares dead-eyed at her former friend as the swarm that is bound to her rips her body apart. Black blood pours in rivers in the aluminum-lined floor. Let's get out of here. You can if you want to. I'm watching this. I owe Malvina that much. Do you? The ghastly feast unfolding before you continues long after Mal Malvina's screams have died away. Finally satisfied, Gobbit nods to you. <sighs> They're after Zars. It's over. Oh. I don't know what you just did, but whatever it was, it worked. Those rat things turned on Malvina's loyalists. And when they they got done eating them, they started eating each other. Yeah, I know. I told them to. Right after I did the same to the Rat King. Malvina's dead, Cad. You did good, Garnet. You and your friends. We won. Come on topside. A celebration's in order. No, Cad. No celebrations. And no milling around. You can keep this place. I'm done with it. Too many bad memories. Besides all of that, you've got a hell of a mess on your hands. I'll be damned if I'm going to help clean it up. You've already helped us clean up, Gobbit. We'll always owe you for that. Yeah. Let's not make a big thing out of it. Goodbye, Cad, and good luck. Captain Jomo's still waiting for us outside. Ready to go home. Beyond ready. And this stupid thing is taking a one-way trip to the bottom of the bay. Good call. Captain Jomo's speedboat carries you away from the sinking ship, now liberated from the tyranny of the Rat King once and for all. The shiny object rests with Malvina's bones at the bottom of Hungham Bay. Gobbit stares back at the raft as it recedes into the distance. Her expression is at once happy and sad. Isabel takes her hand and together they turn away. Hioi goes grows closer. You're going home. Yeehaw. Awesome. Eight karma? Yes, please. We can increase our intelligence. I will have an unrivaled intellect. 
There's no way we will we'll be getting to nine though. I spent too many points on like charisma and stuff. Oh, they're not. I backed out accidentally, I think. Jump burn. Oh wow. Oh, we can give everyone their final upgrades. Yes, please. Gas grenade. Whirlwind. Rip and tear. Get on the big Texas. So we have Gaichu's thing, we have Isabel's thing. Let's see if Duncan has anything to say to us. Or if he's still tapped out, oh, that's not about to turn. Hey Duncan. Welcome back. Oh. Okay. Not much to say. How's God it doing? How are you, champ? Stepping into Gobbit's cabin, you find her crouching on the floor. She appears to be midway through a valiant struggle against an enormous pastry. Her cheeks bulge out like a chipmunk's, and wispy threads of pork floss hang from her crumb-speckled lips. She glances up at you, her eyes wide with alarm. <laughs> her jaw works to manage the enormous quantity of crispy dough in her mouth, but she doesn't seem to be making much headway. My money's on the pastry. She struggles to move her jaw, but her mouth is stuffed too full for her to make much headway. She gestures feebly toward a pitcher of water on the ground near your feet. She tilts back the pitcher and sucks down its contents. As the water pours into her mouth, she's slowly able to work through the food stored in her cheeks. Finally, she lowers the water pitcher, coughing. <sighs> okay, yeah. Note to self, the pastry terrace on Prince Edward Road makes them dry. <sighs> Moist green apple and jelly trotted my ass. That thing was like a desert made of pig. I should have tried to eat the entire thing at once. I was challenging myself for science. And it wasn't the whole pastry. It was just half of one. You, uh, want the rest? Sure. Really? Sure. Then it's all yours. Here, catch. <laughs> catch you catch the flying pork brick out of the air. It's surprisingly dense, with a heft roughly equivalent to that of a softball. Eat it. You raise the pastry to your lips and take a bite. Seconds later, you can feel all of the moisture in your mouth evaporate. Gobbit wasn't lying. This thing is dry. The flavor is surprisingly palatable, though. <sighs> Can't believe you ate that. I'm impressed. If I ever get another one of those, I'm gonna let it sit in a bowl of condensed milk for at least half an hour before I try putting it in my mouth. That might help, I don't know, reconstitute it, I guess? I don't know, might work. That sounds even more disgusting. Anyway, you uh, probably wanna talk about what happened on the raft, huh? Yeah. First off, I should thank you. You and Iz came to help me even though I didn't ask you to, or want you to. Actually, maybe I should be upset about that. But the important thing is that you did help me. I'm not going to say I couldn't have handled it without you. But it would have been really dicey. Yeah, you can say that again. 
But on the bright side, we overthrew Malvina and put the raft back in Cad's hands. That feels pretty great, and the shiny objects at the bottom of Hung Ham Bay lodged in a bank of silt and crab feces. It's pretty much where it belongs. But I've got to admit, something's gnawing at me. Before you and Iz showed up, I was going to sink the raft. I'd gotten halfway through arming the charges. No, you, you were just to save on the safeties. And I was going to send the whole sinking ship down in flames. Everyone on it would have died. Cad, the Yasmin, all of them. All because I made up my mind early and didn't want to change it. Kind of makes me think, how many times before now have I done what seemed like the right thing? You know, followed my gut like I taught you. Without realizing there was a better option. This whole introspection thing kind of sucks, I've got to say. It's much more comforting to just assume that all of my past decisions were right. Sure. You know, Seattle, you aren't helping my mood any. I'm kind of having a tough time over here. Ooh. I don't do this very often. Reflecting is for mirrors, not devastatingly attractive sh street shamans. I don't know how you hand ringers deal with feeling this way. Huh. Yeah, we just own up. Okay, pretty much got that stuff covered. What's next? What comes after this? I think we try and learn, uh, learn some from. Everybody is boring Seattle, and it's complicated, and it comes with way too many bad feelings. But yeah, I get it. There's probably even some value there. I'm never going to start second-guessing everything I do, though. That just isn't me. Yeah, you don't want to always second-guess yourself. Alright, Seattle, I'll give it a shot. Who knows? Maybe there's some value in hand wringing after all. I guess we'll have to see. Anyway, things turn out the way that we did. I don't know what might have happened if we'd tried to do something different, but there's one thing I can say for certain. Things are better in the Hong Kong Bay than they were before we went to the sinking ship. We did some good out there. That's something. Yeah, it is. Oh, actually, there are two things I can say for certain. I think Rat is happy that the shiny object is gone. Check it out. She gave me a present. Oh. Where did that come from? From Rat. Like I said, she literally gave it to me. Put it right in the palm of my hand. I had a vision. It had colorful lights, dancing rodents, the works. And when the world came back into focus, I was holding this magic marble. Neat, huh? I don't quite know how it works yet, but I'm sure it does something. I mean, it has to, right? Rat wouldn't just give me a normal rock. She's a trickster and all, but that'd be mean. So mark my words, the next time we're in the field, something magical is going to happen. I mean, literally magical. It'll be a journey of discovery for both of us. And, uh, thank you, Seattle. I really mean that. You can fly by my side anytime. How are you adjusting to the marble? What does it do? It's kind of like a grenade. When I throw it, it goes boom. Not out here in the real world, but in the astral plane. It's pretty impressive. As for what it actually does, it scares the shit out of anyone who gets caught in the blast. It makes them act like idiots. They run around with their hands in the air, forget about who's shooting at them, and stand around with their fingers in their ears. Handy, huh? Sure. So, here's the thing. When I use this thing, what I think I'm doing is opening a bunch of temporary cracks in the astral plane. Just little ones only wide enough for sounds to pass through. People in the blast radius can hear things on the other side. 
let's say I throw this sucker at someone and it goes off. Boom. All of a sudden, that poor slob can hear the things that got into Malvina shrieking in his brain. Unpleasant. Yeah, it's a bad time for them. All those voices at once, yelling and babbling and cursing, doing the Rat King thing. It'd drive you nuts, right? That's basically what it does. It drives people mad. It makes them work against their own self-interest. It's like temporary insanity in pebble form. I might have to rock you. That's the best part. After I use one of these and go to bed, I find another one in my hand. So you've been using them? Uh, I find another one in my hand the next morning. I've tried it a couple times now. And it keeps happening. Toss, explode, nap. Ta-da! New magic pebble. So, okay, once per mission. Basically. Using this feels right in a way the shiny object never did. I think it's Rat's reward for me taking Malvina down or something. I don't know exactly. I've never heard of this happening to anyone before. Anyway, it should help us moving forward. And considering what we're headed up against, I think we can use all the help we can get. So yeah, do you have none of us? Nope, no more lessons. It's awesome. <sighs> cool. Oh, a permanent 24-7 suit. What does this mean? I'll be here with bells on. I don't know what that means. That phrase, I've never heard heard that. Um You got it. <laughs> oh no. And now Seattle, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna crash out for the night. Need to sleep through tomorrow, get up when the sun goes down. Awesome. Okay, let's help, um, is, why is this still, oh, did I not confirm these? Okay, I guess I didn't, forever. So are we going to Deccan or to help Gaichu? Let's help Gaichu maybe. I'm feeling a little bit more like that. Oh, actually, wait. Is uh, Maximum Law back? I'm curious what happened to him. Uh, where is... Nope, it's still puppet. Damn. What happened to him? Oh well. Drones. Uh, Deccan. What? Okay. Let's take Ractor. Oh, this is all that we got. Okay. Yeah, I think we'd all enjoy Deccan. All of the technical people. Duncan Gobbit would probably think it's boring.
A chartered bus carries you from Kai Tak to a mid-range hotel in Sun Wan. All around you, the happy chatter of your fellow passengers fills your ears. You hear tech speak in a variety of languages and dialects, talk about new lines of drones and decks, arguments over innovations in data jack technology, and basis speculation about the next season of Urban Brawl. Your guest badge, a glossy slip of laminated paper emblazoned with a flashy logo, hangs on a lanyard around your neck. Your ticket into a convention hall in the only disguise that you should need. The bus drops you in front of the Harbor Spires Hotel, and you promptly circle around back to find a service entrance. Isabel should be waiting for you inside. Sweet. Uh, do we want to bring this salve, or do we want to bring... Yeah, salve is good. Uh, you, here, here, uh, here, here. Yeah, let's take all of the things. That's good. The service entrance to the Harbor Spires Hotel looks like any other. Scuffed walls coated with chip paint, a floor of well-worn hardwood, a time card reader hanging from the wall at a slight tilt. Nothing about the dingy, utilitarian confines of the room that you're in hints at the elegance and fine decor of the hotel beyond. I've always been fascinated by seeking, by seeing how things worked. Even as a child, I took apart everything I could in the name of study. And here we are, in the innards of a fancy hotel, examining the viscera of the place, if you will. The plague. You in position? Um. Ooh. You're breaking up a little. That doesn't bode well. <sighs> there, that's better. What a pain in the ass this is. There's way too much interference coming from the show floor. We aren't going to be able to rely on our comlinks for this. I'll find us a workaround. Great. Said, I'll find a workaround. For now, let's concentrate on the task at hand. The catering staff should be all in the kitchen, hauling trays of steamed clams and aperitifs out to the convention hall floor. I'm gonna need you to find a way to get me one of their uniforms, one that will fit someone my size, size four. Good. Oh, and the plague? We aren't going loud yet, got it? Whatever you do, don't start shooting. We can't afford to send Rhombus running before we can get him cornered. Sure. Um, okay, let's look at the alarm panel. the work manifest. Million Swan. Damn sprinklers went off again. The entire kitchen was flooded and Chef Bun quit. We're gonna have to go with third party caterers for the big event this weekend. And because we sure as hell can't steam a few thousand clams without any kitchen staff. Okay. <laughs> Let's send a, a wolf out through.
Whoa. I didn't expect it to be quite so long. I should have had Ractor use his mojo on it to increase its uh, speed. Got the uniform. How do we give this to Isabel? I can just do this right now. Don't mind us. The Harbor Spire's kitchens are a whirlwind of activity. Attractive 20 somethings in white catering uniforms dash in and out of the room, their arms laden with heaping trays of steaming shellfish. One man stands amidst the chaos, the eye of the storm. His white coat is a, at least half again whiter than those of his subordinates, and his colors starched as stiff as a board. The floor manager notices you, and his eyes narrow. He stalks toward you, practically frothing at the map. You can't help but notice the embroidered corporate logo on his lapel. Pastry, magic, and more! Fine catering! The image is completed by a stylized rendering of what appears to be a frolicking kitten standing astride a pair of shooting stars. You! What are you doing in my kitchen? Convention goers are not allowed beyond the show floor. Smell clams. Yes, it, yes, we are steaming clams. And if you want some, you're gonna have to wait on the show floor with everyone else. Now get out. Sure, sure, sure. I'm gonna get out this way. Oh. Nice. Okay, this looks like um a little bit dead, to be honest. There's just people scattered around, uh, just standing there doing nothing. Mm. Ooh, cool drones! Let's check them out. I wish Ractor and I could, like, have a conversation about how cool some of these drones are, how not cool they are, maybe. So let's go in this laboratory. Hey, shady man. Who are you? A sketchy looking man in a long, shabby coat stands in the middle of the bathroom floor, teetering on his feet. He blinks at you through red rimmed eyes, crusted over with sleep. Hey there. Are you, uh, uh, the Imperator? Because if you are, I uh, got your stuff. That's me, baby. Great, great. Here, you want to see the whole stock, or do you just want to buy the items we discussed? Let me see the full stock, man. Oh, it's just drugs. Um, hmm. Yo, I got you a tiny dwarf outfit. 
You enter the women's restroom and find Isabel waiting impatiently for your actor. Get, the, get out of here, ladies only. Her guest badge dangles from its lanyard at a canted angle, and the clump of ropes of her hair look frazzled. At the sight of you, she steps forward. You're here. Good. I was getting tired of hanging out in the ladies' room. You have the uniform? Yeah, here. Good. Good. This will work. All right, I'm going to change this thing and hightail it to the employee's only door on the far side of the convention hall. They'll let me in, even without a badge. They'll just figure that some rich guy wants a drink. Okay. We can make way across through the door. Take the elevator up to admin wing on the sixth floor. Looks like I'm looking for something on my desk. Position and wait for instructions without raising an alarm. Okay, I got it. Should be foolproof, assuming you don't screw anything up. You have any questions? So, what am I supposed to do again? <laughs> wait by the VIP area door. When I identify Rhombus, you will apprehend him and tell him that he's the lucky winner of a complimentary VIP pass upgrade. You'll escort him through the VIP doors into a room that I'll have empty and waiting. Then we'll get all the software from him together, beat him up, and stash him in a closet. Uh. Perfect persona kiosk. Walk the show floor, mingle, try to look like you belong here. Just try not to say or do anything that'll stand out in a bad way. You're supposed to be a hot new decker in town. Try to act the part. I am, though. I don't have to act the part. I am the part. Baby. Let's mingle, hang out. Where am I supposed to? Okay. Whoa. This door is restricted. We'll do, sorry. A working model of Fuji's new Cyber 7 Slim, a retooled Cyber 7 with a thinner form factor, and blah blah blah. Welcome to Mr. Lin's Big Time Data Shack. Special show prices for this event only. Feel free to browse. Buy stuff at the drone booth? Uh, how about you? What are you doing? As you approach the corner of the convention floor, you find a brightly lit entrance. There are signs on the walls pointing toward it. 
Simsons Parlor slash decking area. Well, sorry to say it, but we're a bit crammed right now. If you hang tight, we should be able to squeeze you in soon. There's maybe a half hour wait. Yeah, you've got some VIP slots, right, baby? Mm. Yeah, we're full up. I don't know how else to say it. You need to wait like everyone else. Stay cool, and we'll get you in as soon as possible. Alright. Whatever, I don't need to hang out with those guys. <gasps> okay, I've jacked into the admin computer. Yeah, but I can work with it. Are you in position yet? No, I'm not in position. Kiosk, perfect persona. Got it. While you're getting there, I'll start working on getting you VIP access and locating a ROM. Got it. Interesting. If there's any more exploring you'd like to do, you'd best do it now before we use the kiosk. I doubt we'll get the opportunity afterward. Now I'll look around just a little bit more, man. Is this big doofus gonna sell me anything? Nothing, man. Wait, it is. You don't have a cyber deck. Ooh, a crane missile. Okay, that's pretty cool. Wow, where'd you get it? The Chop Chop Shop in Kowloon City. They told me not to ask where it came from. Lots of things fall off trucks out Kowloon Way. I'm sure that uh, this was the same. Huh, okay, that's pretty cool. That's the kiosk you need to use. Cyberdeck calibration software. Okay, that's this. I'm done looking around. The perfect persona kiosk flickers to life at your approach. A debug menu pops up on the screen along with a text prompt in all caps. The plague enters the following key code into this kiosk. Blah, 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 blah. You tap the code into the kiosk keyboard. A moment later, a series of five loud popping sounds rattled off, rattles off in your Kalmunk's earpiece. Isabel's voice fills your ear, crisper and cleaner than it was before. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Can you hear me, the plague? Yes. A command line code for the kiosk to connect with your Kalmunk via direct link. Oh, hey, Delta. Thanks for uh, stopping by. This way, we can bypass using a comm signal entirely. Clever. I know. As long as you remain within a couple feet of the kiosk, we shouldn't have any problems. Wander too far outside of that range, and you're gonna get static again. Okay. So I'll say, like, right next to the kiosk. Now we're all linked up. Give me a second and I'll locate Rhombus. The line falls silent. The silence stretches. 10 seconds, 20. Then you hear Isabel explode. What the hell? He already has one? How the hell does Rhombus merit a VIP pass when I don't? Oh wait, he's already in the VIP area. I'm twice the decker he is. And everybody knows it. What makes him a VIP when I'm not? Now calm down. She takes a moment to calm herself down. You can almost feel the heat of her anger radiating through your earpiece. Alright, I know which room he's staying in now. I'll just need a few minutes to get your VIP upgrade. The line goes dead. 
Well, my friend, what to do now, shall we? A series of clicks erupts in your ear, cutting Ractor's sentence short. Your PDA begins blinking, and you're receiving a video chat request. Yeah, let's answer it. Oh. Isabel blossoms onto the screen, along with a pair of towering security guards. The line that connected her to the admin terminal hangs loose from its socket. I'm gonna have to ask you again, ma'am. What the hell are you doing in here? Take your time and make sure you're telling me the truth. I'll know if you don't. This guy's really tall. I, uh, well, I was just looking for the person who ordered this coffee. She looks so different in this, uh, getup. Very strange. What, you were looking for him in the Matrix? And besides, you don't have any coffee. Try again. I need, um... Hmm. Okay, let's see. Let's coach her. The Cyrano thing, yes. That's what we're doing. Yes, please, I need help. <laughs> You're telling me. Alright, this is your last chance. Start talking sense. Or spe we're spending the night with the HKPF. Oh, jeez. Yeah, a co-worker sent as a prank. My co-worker sent me in here as a prank. I feel dumb. We don't have time for this. Just kick around and be done with it. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm gonna let you go with a warning this time, but only this once. If I catch you anywhere near this room again, I'm turning you over to the police. Got it? But I... Um, yeah, just go along with it. Don't, don't argue. Yes, sir. Okay, let's get her back to the convention floor. What a damn nightmare this is turning out to be. Sorry, the plague, but I couldn't get your VIP access. That's fine. You got Ramos' room number, right? Yeah, I got it. I can take you right there. There's only one problem. Without VIP access, you can't open the door without signing in a little... No, okay, our connection still sucks. I'll let you through from this side. That's what I'm gonna do now. I'll make my way down to you and open the door. Yeah, the comms just got out. I did, but that fix required me to be jacked into the hotel's computer network, and I'm not anymore. I'm still using the kiosk to talk to you, but I can't route messages to it directly anymore. It'll still help, but it won't be perfect. Please stay put. If you lose that kiosk, we're going to start running into some serious communication issues. Got it. Oh, and I, uh, may need your help if I run to more people up here at the plague. In case you hadn't guessed, I'm not exactly a social butterfly. If things go loud, I'll really need your help. Sure thing. Um, which room is which? I don't know. Uh, what is this room? I don't know. Computer, though. I'll be damned. It's logged into an admin inbox, and somebody left it unlocked. I can't open the door for you from here. We can read the messages if you want. Sure, let's read the messages. First message. Ghost in the machine. Look, I'm going to come around and say it. The security guys are right. There's something horribly wrong with that noodle extruder. 
I ran a diagnostic on it this afternoon. I was halfway through recalibrating the broth nozzles when the damn thing started humming. Sure enough, it started churning out steaming hot juxing noodles, just dumping them into the palms of my hands. You don't even want to see the blisters I'm sporting right now. Now here's the freaky thing. The dough hopper was empty. I unloaded it myself prior to beginning the diagnostic. I want to repeat that. It was producing dough out of thin air. That machine's haunted. That sounds amazing! Infinite, uh, noodle machine. That machine's haunted. If you want my advice, you'll get rid of it before the show. The noodle extruder in the food court area is out of order, and should be left unplugged until further notice. Under no circumstances should any hotel or deckcon employee tamper with this device. Maintenance is looking into it. Again, do not plug in the extruder. Severe disciplinary action will be taken against any employee caught disobeying these instructions. Okay, I'm getting seriously creeped out over here. The damn noodle extruder's back. Can't explain it. We boxed the thing up yesterday and sent it to the manufacturer. It wasn't here five minutes ago. But now we've opened the doors and the show's underway. I'm strolling through the food court, and there it is, just sitting there, with a line already forming. What the heck do we do? You and I both know that it doesn't have any dough in it. There's no seasoning in the spice res reservoir. We don't have it hooked up to the hotel's water supply. The thing isn't even plugged in. Where are the noodles coming from? What do we do? A great mystery. <laughs> are we going to get her in trouble by sitting here and reading all these messages? It's too late, Nancy. At least a dozen people have already eaten from the thing. We can't shut it down now. And we sure as heck can't let anyone know about it. If people were to get sick, the show could be held liable. Look, if it's any consolation, I've been pouring through- Pouring is not- that's not pouring. Uh, through the logs of old shows to see if anyone had mentioned the noodle extruder. I found something. This exact conversation. Fourteen years in a row. I don't know what's happening with this machine. I don't know where it came from, or how, or why. But it's a part of Deccon. Nobody can get rid of it. Nobody knows how it works. It just does. People keep coming back to visit it. I think that this is a blessing in disguise. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. Just don't question it, and everything will be okay. Yeah, it is a blessing. You have a machine that you don't have to get dough, seasoning, water, or anything. It just makes noodles. That's amazing. We have a ghost noodle machine. We need to go uh, use it. High level looks like conference room three on the bottom floor. Okay. Do we get useless information? Oh, filter. Take stash. Now make up for the one that we gave that injured lady in the last mission. Oh. Hello there, sir. Don't mind me, I'm just a normal staff here. Isabel's outline goes fuzzy the moment she sets foot into the elevator. A loud, rhythmic whooshing sound dominates the low end of your PDA speakers. It sounds a bit like the rotors of a helicopter. Alright. An elf in his mid-twenties steps aside to let Isabel at the floor selector panel. He looks wired, jittery, it's thin to the gills, most likely. There's no telling how long it's been since he's got a wink of sleep. Working the show, huh? That has to be hard. I feel tempted to blow off work and go check out the kiosks, maybe take in a panel or two. Um... I wish we had drop our and just explore. It's tough, alright. I wish I could just drop... Oh. Isabel. 
King Ding, huh? That's an interesting street name. Been decking under it long. Yeah, a couple of years now. Longer than anyone else used the handle. Yeah, be careful, Is. I know who you are. You're the one who shut down the Kowloon City power grid six months ago. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Let's just keep that between ourselves, though, alright? That little stunt screwed over a lot of local deckers. A couple of them soaked up nasty hits of dump shock because of it. You wrecked the grid while they were all jacked into their home machines. Oh, okay. And my team was in a bind. They needed a power outage right then and there, or they were cooked, so I gave them one. It was the best solution to a bad situation. Let's leave it at that. Hmm. There was this decker. She lived out in Hyoi, called herself Spinster. She was a good person, and now she's in the ground. She never came back out of the coma your stump put her into. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we're not here for this guy. <laughs> At least that's what I heard. <laughs> I'm just a caterer. I'm not a decker myself. Uh, yeah, sure, sure you're not. You've come to get me, haven't you? Take revenge for your friend. Did your people put you out of contract on me? Is that it? Um... Yeah, I don't think I don't think we're fooling anyone, so let's go with the second. I took the contract, but I've decided not. Please as well, don't do anything stupid. Whatever you do. Oh. I did what I had to do. If you were in my position, you'd have done the same. You'd have, if you'd have gotten them killed. There was no third way out of that scenario. <laughs> Thanks, Kuma. I would not have. Isabel, stop it. What? You're crazy, an insane person. You might get out of this elevator. I'm going to hotel security office. Crap. Um... No, don't apologize to him. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're, we're with the Yellow Lotus. He's dead if he steps over to that security office. You don't want to turn me in. My boss would be very unhappy. I work for Kindly Chen. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry, I didn't mean... Uh, again, it cuts out. As quickly as it went, the picture flickers back into your PDA screen. Ding Ding looks calmer now. The elevator is descending. Remember what we discussed. You keep your cool, and this turns out well for both of us. We live and let live. Understood? Yeah, I didn't want any trouble from you in the first place. I'm, I'm just glad it was all a little misunderstanding. Please, don't take this the wrong way, but I'll be happy if this is the last I ever see of you. Heckin' yeah. Feelings mutual. Enjoy the rest of the show. Sweet. Navigated that okay. What is this horrible music? Oh no. What is this? Security. Okay. Is that another security? Hmm. I'm gonna have to go through them. Are they going to harass me as I walk past? Yes. The hallway is blocked by a trio of struggling bodies. A blackout drunk troll hangs slung between a pair of cursing security guards. One male and one female. As you watch, they struggle valiantly to drag her down the hallway. Unhand me, you fools. You foolish. 
<laughs> Don't let her go, Ho Yi. She has the strength of two men. Ten men, in fact. Huh. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, so she was the one near the employee entrance. That means the employee entrance hopefully unguarded. Maybe. Clear the hall. Say nothing. You dwarf girl, help me. These these dreckheads want me to leave because I'm a troll. Um, what's happening here? It's none of your business, ma'am. You're not even hotel staff. You shouldn't be back here at all. Uh, I am. I'm dressed in a catering uniform. I'm clearly hotel staff. He hugs the troll's left arm to his chest with all of his strength, desperately trying to weigh her down. She lifts his feet a few inches off the floor, then slams him back down. He lets out an audible whimper. Now clear... Clear the way and report to your manager. Quit fighting me, damn it, before I talk, talk to him for you. Okay. Hey, I remember you. You said you had to meet some caterers up on 6. What are you doing down here? We needed more fuel for the chafing dishes. The buffet is getting cold. There was supposed to be some here. Hmm. Why would we keep cooking supplies here? If anything, they'd be in the kitchen. Yeah, just, just following orders, lady. Look, I only know what I'm told. My boss said to come here, so I did. You do what your asshole boss tells you, don't you? Watch it. Look, just hurry back to the kitchen and get out of our hair. Good job. Oh, this is exhausting. No more improvi improvisation for me. I'm done with this. From now on, I'm your parrot. Just tell me what to say and I'll say exactly that. Uh, I mean, she did a pretty good job, actually. Come on, slowly walk away. Sweet. Whoop. Uh, okay. I thought the game was going to freeze. An impressive-looking man in a starched white coat blocks the hallway. He turns, and you recognize the familiar pastry magic and more insignia on his lapel. He fixes his gaze on Isabel, and the expression on his face is anything but happy. What are you doing back here? We went over this in the staff meeting this morning. I'm the one who's covering this area. The VIPs are to be handled by managers only. You should be on the convention hall floor. Uh, yeah, the sent me back here was a prank. Let's double down on that. I know, sorry. They sent me back here, but I, th I think it was a prank. And you fell for that? You had specific instructions to stay on the show floor. Sorry, I'm new here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't recognize... Oh no, there's someone talking to, to me. Hey, uh, new here? You must be joking, woman. You've been in the kiosk for 20 minutes now. Damn it. I guess she is on her own then. I said it's time for you to get off that dang demo kiosk. You've been hogging it for way too long. Now there's a line here. Uh, just, just give me five more minutes, dude. Oh, no! We're still plugged... No. Okay. Oops. So, okay, we're having two conversations at the same time. Okay. Let me Let me try and think about this said that's enough 
I've been following the devs of the software for months now, and I traveled 17 hours to try it out myself. That doesn't seem like a huge journey, to be honest. You do not get to tell me that I flew here for nothing. Get the heck off my kiosk or I'm calling security. Uh. Okay, let's see. What makes sense for Isabel to say right now? None of these, really. Uh, this. Violent. Violent, you're threatening me. Calm down. Let's talk about this. This doesn't have to get violent. Oh, violent? You think I'm threatening to hurt you? I never said I'd do anything like that. Don't blow things out of proportion. Um. Yeah, I'm here to do a job. And this makes no sense for our kiosk, but whatever. What are you, a tech reviewer or something? Never mind, don't answer I don't care. If you want special time and consideration with the kiosk, you should have arranged that with the devs ahead of time. But now you're wasting everybody's time, including mine. Look, I'm here to do a job. Get out of my hair and let me do it, and I'll be on my way. A job? I don't know what you're here to do, but it sure as heck isn't serving food for my company. You must have stolen that uniform. There, the guards are on their way, you little maniac. Enjoy talking to them about this. Well, I guess that we screwed up. Blake, I'm gonna need some backup. Down the VIP door and hightail it my way. Okay. Yeah, okay, we don't care about... Well, whose promises to be interesting? Come, my friend, let's make some noise. Alright, let's do it. Wow, this, uh, this sucks. I guess I did not do that right. Break VFP door, sure. Oh, I, I'm not strong enough to break it down. Oh. Okay, I guess I did. Oh, so I have two actions left, I need to activate my drones. This is just a, uh, a demonstration on the show floor of our new drone technology. Everyone can stay calm. So are there any enemies in this room? No? Okay, so we need to get in here and just focus on helping out Izzy. Target lock. Wow, really? Maybe we should have moved up further. I uh, wish you were in cover, is, but that's fine. Dead eye. How did I miss? Come on. Um, Koshche. Give him a little bit of an overclock. And then Ractor, you can you can move up. Well found. Oh. Just whiffing on all of these. Rip and tear. Critical chance boosted, sure. 
<sighs> okay. At least the drones will have them distracted, so they're attacking Isabel. What is this weapon? Cavalier Deputy. It's not very good with it. I wish we had Duncan to non lethally take down these people. Not how I want this mission to go. All right, everyone, okay? We good? Is this the VIP room? No, it's just the elevator up. Go get rhombus. Um, okay, it's that. What's, uh, Interesting looking hotel. Hey, you rhombus. As you burst through the door, you find yourself standing face to face with a small, heavily tattooed man. Geometric shapes of all descriptions trace their way from his temples down his cheeks and neck to his shoulders. His eyes continue the motif. Each of his irises is a slanted rectangle. <laughs> Rhombus looks at Isabel and sighs. He's surprised to see her. He doesn't show it. You finally want him back, huh? The memories that we locked away. I always knew you would one day. But you got so hostile after the procedure. I didn't think you'd come around this soon. Oh, get that, Rhombus. I got hostile with you because you got hostile with me. Like hell I did. I tried to give you some advice, as a friend. If memory serves, you called me a patronizing douchebag and slagged my deck. Was I just supposed to take that without punching back? Oh, you slagged his deck. That's a big... No-no in the Decker community. Yeah, whoa, Isabel. I called you a patronizing uh, dude because that's what you were being. You wouldn't have taken that tone if I were a guy or an orc or a troll. You talked down to me like I was your little sister or something. Well, guess what? I'm not. Whoa, hold up. I talked that way to you because... Also, punch back? That's f a funny way of putting it. You tailored an ESP to troll all of my posts on Shadowland. What kind of dude would do a thing like that? The kind whose cat you had killed, you little monster. Captain Whiskers was just a house cat. He didn't have anything to do with this. What? <laughs> what is happening? Isabel, did you kill his cat? I'm on his side if you did. That wasn't me. I would never hurt a cat. If I were going to have someone killed, it would have been you. Oh my god, guys. Both of you, shut up. <laughs> Let me ask you something. How many people did you kill to get to me? I mean, what kind of death toll are we looking at here? I'm assuming the gunshots in the hall were you doing. Two. We killed two people to get to you, Rhombus. Nah, it wasn't my choice. Oh, really? Yeah, sure. 
Help! Security! Somebody help! They can't hear you, Rom. Know why? Because we killed them. <laughs> now give me the goddamn key. Rhombus doesn't respond other than to increase the pitch of his screaming. He looks like he's on the verge of hyperventilating. To hell with this. Let's hit him like a pinata until software comes out. Sound like a plan? Uh, you're both behaving like children. I do agree. What? Um... Yeah, I don't have time to work out your personal problems. Rhombus, give Izzy the software. Uh, there, just check your inbox. You have it. And for the sake of whatever friendship we might have had, please, just let me go. Sweet. He wasn't lying. I've got the encryption key. Let's stuff him in a closet and go home. The encryption key? What do you mean? Um, technically I have it. Up here, in, in headwear storage. I can't access it without the key. And thanks to Rhombus here, now I've got it. Okay, so you're trying to access your memories. Okay. What was this really about? Covering my old memories. The ones about the walled city. I still have them, but I can't get at them. Rhombus did that after I moved here. At your request, you little psycho, you begged me to do it. It's actually true. We were friends then. Now we're not, and that's why you're getting stuffed in a closet. Okay, we're shoving him into a closet. <laughs> Great. Why? <laughs> Come on, the plague. We got what we came here for. Let's go home. Suddenly, an explosion of sounds fills your ears. Heavy footfalls advancing down the hall. You hear shouting, the crackle of radios. It's the HKPF. Ugh. Dang it. Rom must have called the cops. He's probably got a panic button or something. Get ready to plague. We've got company. Okay. Um. I guess that's... Go out and greet them. No? Okay, where are they coming from? Whoa, hello there. Hello. Perhaps you'd also like a demonstration of my drones. They, um, need new accuracy algorithms. A conjurer, a guard, and an enforcer. Okay, that doesn't sound too bad, actually. Okay, Ractor, get here and then activate Coach Jet. We can't uh, speed up Kostra this round, so let's just go in and rip and tear. Yeah, take that. Uh, Isabel, you... You run up here to the very front and just hang out. That's cool. Wait, did it? <laughs> she lost control of it immediately. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, now I guess we have to deal with it too, though. Maybe I should just move back and hope that it, it attacks uh, them. Yeah, let's, let's 
Let's get this guy from behind. Let's do a little flanking. Dead eye. Yeah, hopefully the Inferno thing goes for um for the guy right behind it. here to me. You know, go hang out with uh, Ractor. Oh wow, I could do it from that far away. Okay, I'll take it. Kneecap. Uh, these guys are not even like a threat really yeah, Let's just see what happens see what the inferno does Wow It's gonna do all the heavy lifting for us then we just have to clean up the inferno Chunky. Um, let's give him one more turn to hang out together. Okay. Time to go take it out. It's infernal cleanup time. Don't forget Gobbit. Gobbit could just kill it instantly. <sighs> um, it probably is immune to bleeding. We won't ever hit it with a grenade. Wow, why is our accuracy so trash? Oh well. Um, Sawblade. Why does Sawblade always miss? It's okay, Ractor. We'll protect your baby. Come on, Isabel. Yes. Okay, let's get out of here as fast as possible. We're probably gonna have another fight on the bottom floor. Oh, we don't even have to do the bottom floor. We're just back in here. I'm okay with that. The bus trip back to Kai Tak is quieter than the ride in was. Your fellow passengers sit crumpled in their seats, barely moving, barely speaking. Their Detcon 2056 t-shirts hang loose on their frames, and their once-cherished guest badges have been crumpled into their pockets. You've seen more lively groups on their way to the morgue. Isabel looks up at you, her eyes full of the same post-con fatigue that you see in everyone else's. She gives you a small smile and taps her temple with a fingernail. You've got what you came for. The show's over. It's time to go home. 
I'm gonna go talk to her and see what sort of memories she is able to recover. Sweet. And we need to help Gaichu ambush his former team, and then we are, I think, done with our companion side quests. And we can actually do, like, the next actual quest. Which sounded like a point of no return. Okay, back on the big taxes. Maybe we'll try talking to Dunk again. Easy. Isabel half turns away from the octopus's main display. She looks up at you, blinking. The memory stick that you had acquired from Rhombus has already been slotted into one of the computer's many expansion ports. The cherry red plastic that sheathes the stick looks slick and wet in the light. You did good back there. The run went well. We got the stick, the key to my old memories. All I have to do now is slot it. I'll do it. I mean, I can. It'd be as simple as plugging myself in and tapping a key. My old memories are all mine if I want them. But you're not sure you want them. You did have them locked, I guess, in the first place. It's about the shape of it. I'm feeling hesitant about this. It isn't easy, you know, shifting organic memories into headwear storage. Wiping the originals and locking them away for safekeeping. Corporate-level mind sculpting. Serious business. Yeah, so it was important to you to lock them away. Very important. If it wasn't, I wouldn't have let an amateur tinker with my brain in the corner of a derelict shopping mall. Whatever I've got up there, I was desperate to get rid of it. it makes a girl wonder why. Hmm. Yeah, then why didn't you have Rhombus just uh, delete them back then? <sighs> yeah, it would have been much easier. Still not without risk, but we didn't do that. I guess I knew one day I might need them. Yeah, you've already made this decision. You're right. <laughs> I've already decided what to do. I'm just dragging my feet, because I'm afraid. Yeah, you shouldn't let fear decide for you. You should recite the mantra against fear. Um, you have to let it pass over you and through you. Oh uh, yeah, let's be afraid of but the Yama King. It's not your memories. You're right. I know that. I know it before we went to get the code. I just needed to talk it through with someone. Not Gobbit. Someone who could take the situation seriously. I needed to talk it through with you. That's what I'm here for. Without another word, she pulls a cable from a pile on the floor and slots it into her data jack. The other end disappears into one of the octopus's many brains. Her fingers fly across the octopus's keyboard, rattling off a series of audible clicks. Finally, her thumb hovers over the execute key. Alright, the plague. Wish me luck. The key depresses with an audible click. Isabel's eyes flutter and her cheeks flush with blood. I- oh. No, 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 no. Oh, dang it. Uh, you got this, Is. Thanks for a tip. I'm, I'm not backing down. I'm almost done. The progress bar climbs to 100. Isabel snatches the cable back out of her data jack and covers her eyes with her hands. She's shivering. I, uh, now I remember why I didn't want these anymore. You alright? No. 
No, I'm not alright. I'm the opposite of alright. There's a lot of bad stuff in there. Things that... that happened to friends of mine. Relatives. Things that I watched happen. No. Free. You're strong. It's harder than you think. These memories are crystal clear. It's like all of this happened yesterday. I can remember watching friends die, and I can see their screaming faces just as clearly as I did the day that it happened. It's like watching a trid show, but my life, as it's real. Is there something there that can help us? I think so, yes. It'll take time for me to sift through all of this. I'll hold on to these memories for as long as I can. Hopefully long enough to reveal something useful. No promises beyond that, though. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. I could still crack in a half hour and lock away the files. <laughs> Don't do my best not to, though. One thing that does jump out at me. Rhombus archives some software up here. It's sitting on top of the memories, all wrapped up like a present. I don't know why he did it, but it looks like a combat package. Combat package? Some sort of basic attack modification. I'll have to study it to be sure, but I think I can use it. Awesome. Yeah, it's all very exciting. But for now, just give me some space, okay? Like I said, it's going to take time for me to make sense of this stuff. Alright, I'll check back later. Uh, so I'm checking back now. As you step into Isabel's cabin, she turns to face you. The desk that she's been working at is a mess. Food wrappers and the computer expansion cards lie together in a heap. Isabel herself doesn't look much better. Her eyes are badly bloodshot, and her lips have been drawn into a deep frown. You're back. Hey, what do you need? How are you holding up? Not great. I'll manage. What's going on? When I unlocked these old memories, I told you that they were crystal clear, right? Every detail was perfect. It's still that way. And I think it always will be. Well, yeah, it's on, um, like, computer storage, not, not brain storage, so... Because they've been stores data in an archival format. They're never going to fade. They'll never grow less intense with time. It's like having an eidetic memory. I'm stuck with a perfect record of every crappy thing that I saw and felt during my childhood in hell. It's not an easy thing to live with. Um... Yeah, when we're, when this is all done with, you can lock them away again. That's what I'm hanging on to. The fact that I can ditch my childhood again and forget the things I saw. All the more reason to get through this business with the Walled City quickly. Speaking of which, if you wanted to ask me questions about that place, you can go ahead. I think I've had enough time to process what's in my head. I should be able to give you some answers, not all the answers. But something. Um, hmm. <laughs> How did you get out of there? Gobbit let me out. Wow. Must have been tight for a long time. Yeah, a long time. Look, if you want to know about more of the more about this, go ask Gobbit about it. I'm sure she'll be happy to brag about her thrilling exploits. I think we have more pressing matters to discuss. Yeah, sure. Oh, no, I don't have any more to ask. Great. Good. I've had enough for one day, and I'm tired. Reliving this stuff is exhausting. Come back later if you want. I'll have had more time to unpack this stuff by then. Until then, please give me some space. Oh, with that, I think I'm actually going to get off and make some lunch eat some lunch, find some lunch, scrounge some lunch, forage for lunch, something like that. Um, uh, maybe I'll take a peek at Gobbit's dialogue, see if they're saying no. Oh, okay, we do. Got a question about Isabel. Oh yeah? Well, sure, ask away. 
You let her off the Walt City as kids. Yeah, I guess I'm not surprised. This has never been big on padding a story with unnecessary detail. So yeah, what is, uh, spill the deets? <sighs> to start with, I guess you're gonna need to know what the Walled City was like when me and Iz were kids. She didn't tell you anything about that, did she? Nope. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, for starters, you should probably know that the Walled City wasn't always as bad as it is now. It was always dangerous, but ten years ago it was just a run-of-the-mill slum. Still safe enough that walking in it didn't qualify as a suicide attempt. Yeah. The bottom? What you saw? No, Seattle. When you went into the Lotus Den, you were on the outer perimeter of the Walled City. What you saw earlier is the best the Walled City of today has to offer. As you go deeper toward the center, it gets a whole hell of a lot worse. Anyway, back when I was a kid, it was pretty much all like what you saw in the Lotus Den. Not exactly Victoria Harbor, but survivable if you knew what you were doing. Back then, I used to play in the Walled City. Rat would lead me into all the nooks and crannies that grown-ups were too big to fit through. There was this other young shaman in there that I used to play with. His name was Happy or Lucky or something like that. He followed Pig. Nice guy. Good card player. Obviously, none of this was a good idea. A teenage girl going into the Walled City by herself? A recipe for disaster. I didn't realize any of this at the time, though. I loved playing in the alleys and crawl spaces. It was fun. That's how you met Isabel? Yeah, inside the wall there were these districts. You were in one of them when Cheng sent you after Strangler Bao, the Lotus Den. How many districts? A lot. Some aren't much bigger than an apartment building. You'd be surprised how many people you can cram into a single room when you have to. Isabel and her family lived in the Mansion District. It's sort of a holding pen for refugees from the Middle East and Africa. Basically anyone who isn't Asian, European, or goblinoid. It's less pleasant than it sounds. Huh. Why was it called the Mansion District? The locals named it after Chungking Mansions out of... Out in... Tsumsha Tsui... Sort of an inside joke. The mansions are the unofficial African quarter of Hong Kong. Most of the free enterprise zones African immigrants settle here if they can afford it. The destitute refugees like Iz and her family don't get to go to Chungking Mansions. They get herded into the walled city, and once they're inside, the mansion district is where they wind up. Yeah, I guess they at least had somewhere to go. I don't know if I'd call it luck. The only things that most people in the Mansion District had in common were their skin color and the fact that they were living in crushing poverty. There wasn't even a common language for them to speak. It was a pretty rough place. Lots of infighting. Lots of gang-on-gang -gang violence. People did band together for protection. But there wasn't a lot of hope. Everyone lived in fear of being sent deeper into the slum, toward the center. When you start getting dragged in that direction, you don't come back. Yeah, charming. That's where I met Isabel. It wasn't long before we were friends. She was interesting. I think that's why I let her latch on to me. The girl was smart and savvy, but cripplingly shy. She didn't belong in the walled city. No one really does. But with her, it was painfully obvious. She was like a little mouse crammed into a box full of weasels. It was only a matter of time before somebody snapped her up. Nice. Yeah, I got her out. More accurately, Rat got her out of there. She came with me in a dream. Showed me that... She came to me in a dream. Rat did, I guess. Showed me that whatever was going... Bad in the walled city was getting worse. The whole place was rotting from the inside out, choking in bad key and lost hope. I decided to go inside one more time. If I found Isabel, I'd offer to lead her out. If I didn't... Well... Uh, well, you did find her. Thanks. It isn't pleasant to think about, especially considering what a hellhole the walled city is now. The truth of the matter is, if I hadn't pulled Isabel out of there, she'd probably be dead by now. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I knew you'd get it, and I did bump into her, and she did follow me, and Rat got us out safe. 
So there you have it. Happy endings all around. What about that pig shaman? They went bad. Crazy. That pig shaman that I knew wound up going full on toxic. It was horrifying. He burned himself out in an orgy of blood. Nasty business. Not for me. Toxic. When a shaman goes toxic, he goes bad. It's like you invert the usual meaning of a totem. That's what a toxic shaman does. Dog shamans are loyal and friendly. Like all good dogs are. A toxic dog shaman is rabid. They're both dog, but they're different aspects of dog. Get it? Okay, so a toxic pig. You don't want to know what happened to him. What he became. It was pretty bad at the end, before the locals overwhelmed him. A lot of people died. What about Izzy's family? Look, it was going to be dangerous enough to get Isabel out on her own. Dragging a whole family out with her would have been impossible. Why? Because they weren't like me and Iz. They hadn't grown up on the streets. They were upper class people back in Somalia, where they emigrated to Hong Kong. They were hopelessly out of their element. Even if I had managed to find them, they probably would have done something stupid and gotten us killed. So you just left them? Damn right I did. Even if I'd managed to convince them to come with us, they would have gotten caught. The Yellow Lotus would have kidnapped them if they were lucky. And if they were unlucky, the Thrill Gangs or Organ Leggers might have gotten them. It wasn't worth the risk to even try. Besides which, Isabel didn't want to bring her family. She wanted to get away from them as much as she did from the Walled City. Never could get her to tell me why. Wait, I, I thought I was going to... Okay, I didn't have anything to ask you, I guess. Okay. Uh, so I am going to go get that lunch. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Thanks for uh, chilling with me for a bit. Peace out. Rainbow trout.